Okay, now we'll use this small box to program the desired temperature for the solar oven. It's not unlike a small project I did back in the mid-80s when I worked for Square D Automation Products in Milwaukee. We called it a loader monitor. I guess I'll call this a programmer monitor. It allows me to use it for other things besides the oven, but here we're going to program the desired temperature and then we can monitor what's going on or read back temperature logs and the like. So I'll turn the power on and the first thing we see is it says press the clear key. We'll press the clear key. Now either I can enter my desired temperature or if I mistake, make a mistake I can press the clear key and start over. Let's say I want to enter 225 and I go 2, 5, Oops, don't want that. So I'll clear it, start over again, 2, 2, 5. Now my temperature is 225. Now it says to read log, press enter key. If, that, if I had this outside logging temperatures uh, in the whole sequences, uh, I could read those back at this time. Otherwise I'll clear the hit the clear key, and it clears out what was in there, and then it'll come back and tell me, my desired temperature is 225 degrees and then I should turn the power off and flip the toggle switch from program to run and I'm ready to go outside and put it through its paces. Now I've deliberately got the oven positioned so it's not facing directly into the sun and you should see it self adjust here once uh, we get to that point. It will gradually tick over until it's directly facing the sun. It moves until the shadows are just about even on both sides of the verticals. Now, once it's done with the east-west, it will uh, it will go vertical, and then when you see you'll see the little uh, screw turn and adjust it on an up and down position. It might have a few more ticks. It only goes a few degrees, and I there it goes. You can see it going up now. And it's going to go a little more because I had it off a bit. But I do have a delay in between because as I said in my one of my videos, I don't want to stress that chip that drives the uh, stepper motor. But you can see it moving it up. Once it's to a very neutral position, that will stop and then we'll continue. Now I've got the oven programmed for 225 degrees, which is pretty low. It's probably almost there, but I want to demonstrate that when it gets to 225, it moves 90 degrees back toward the east and waits for the temperature to uh, drop off a bit, and then it'll return to where it was. Now, the oven has just moved 90 degrees east. I missed the movement because I wasn't ready to catch it on video, but it'll stay there for it'll at least one minute it, it it moves and then it reads the temperature once a minute until the temperature drops off now at these lower temperatures uh, it might stay there for several minutes before it goes back to full sun now we don't know what's going to happen hopefully it'll go back quickly but it was about 228 when it moved I could check the temperature on my little panel and uh, so it might have a while to cool off one thing I've noticed on these, and not to blame some of them, but any of these uh, fine metal thermostats read high. I'll trust my thermocouple over these things, and they, I have two of them in the oven, just to compare, and they both read, anyway, there goes the oven back now. It, it, it was about a minute, and it's going to go back, and it might have to adjust a little more once it gets there. So now it'll sit there and wait for the temperature to go back to 225, Rotate 90 degrees back, and I found that I can I can uh, hold that temperature at the lower temperatures around plus or minus, not plus or minus, about between 225 and 230. About a five degree difference. It's really close. We'll wait a little while, see if it's going to go back. But uh, if not, that'll basically demonstrate it. What's happened here? It might see generally when it cools off and goes back to full sun it takes a little longer to warm back up. Uh, but it, it, it just might, we'll give it a little more time and uh, see if it moves back again. But a lot of times it might be there for several minutes before it goes back to 90. 
90 degrees. I found that I really have to move it about 90 degrees to get to get the best effect. Uh, anything less than that, and it will it will uh, be doing a lot more. There it goes back now. See, it's moving back due east. It'll be there for a minute or thereabouts, and then we'll uh, we'll go back. I'll give it one more cycle. I don't want to have a real long-winded video here, but we'll give it one more cycle. And it might go back within a minute, and I'll shut it down. But uh, you kind of get the idea of how this thing works. And believe me, it tracks the temperature very closely. One of the nice things about this, now this is set at 225 degrees, which isn't very warm, but let's say you want to dehydrate. Or just a, a long, slow cook at 200 to 225. I've tested it all the way up to 325 in 25-degree increments. And, and uh, of course, the higher you get, the longer it takes to heat up. But I've been cooking meals in it, and uh, the only problem I have right now is condensation on the glass. I've got to tie a few things, maybe a, a baking bag or or something else. But uh, other than that, but there it goes back now. So it's going to go back to full sun and wait till it gets to 225, and she'll kick back. So I'm going to leave this at that, and uh, maybe some more later. In an earlier video, I showed you how I used this programmer to uh, program the temperature for the solar oven. Here I'd like to demonstrate how I read back the temperatures when the oven went into the holding pattern. It records the temperature when it first moves to the east, and then every minute thereafter, it will record the temperature. When it moves back westward, it will record a zero as a demarker for me, telling me that the, the uh, sequence is finished. It will record as many uh, temperatures as need be once a minute if it is in a hold period longer than that. The reason I did this was because I wanted to determine how far I should move the panel eastward and how often I should sample the temperatures for a, a nice pattern to not be in the whole pattern too long or not long enough. And this worked out pretty well. So we'll, power, we'll turn the power on and just as before it says press the clear key which I have to do and I either have to program a new temperature or the same temperature, it doesn't matter. I'll program 250 and now it says to read the log press the enter key or you press the clear key and you I'll continue as before so I'll press enter and it tells the first address temperature was 228 when it exited it was 222 and there's a zero saying that was only one sequence the next sequence it started at 226 it exited at 221 and again a zero telling me there was only one sequence in that hold. Now I can either clear the log out or continue on without clearing the log. If I press the clear key it clears it out starts like it normally. If I press enter again it doesn't clear the log. It stays in there but my temperature program is set at 250 and I do the normal power cycle. I'll turn it off for now. And that's the um, way I'd record those temperatures while the oven is in hold.